the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side. And welcome back on the Sunday morning. Today we are speaking with Congressman Warren Davidson, who represents Ohio's 8th Congressional District. You know, health care is a big topic right now. Um, as uh, GOP tries to do a repeal and replace on Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, and uh, we have a segment called Feedback Friday where viewers get to call in and you fill up our voicemail with your concerns on a number of topics, but healthcare obviously is a big one right now. I want you to listen to some of these calls that we've received this week and uh, we're gonna, we'll touch base and talk about the issues afterwards. Let's listen to this. I voted for Trump. I thought he'd be great and I don't like his health care. I live in a health care facility and I think this bill is ridiculous. It surely will not be any service or help to me or millions of people like me. I cannot see why it's so difficult to pass a bill that everyone can benefit from. The Senate needs to turn their attention to something constructive uh, rather than these obsessive, relentless, dogmatic efforts to repeal Obamacare. Obviously, a lot of frustration there voiced by our viewers. I know Medicaid is a concern. The CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, has, has said 22 million people uh, could lose their, their benefits. Where do you stand with this health care bill as it, as it stands right now? Well, the bill that passed the House, eventually I voted for, right? Mm -hmm. So the downside is the bill does far less than what we promised voters. What you hear now is people that are vocal critics of the path we're on. Mm -hmm. But what you heard in November were people that go, go to the ballot box and cast their votes. And overwhelmingly, they said, we want to repeal Obamacare. That's been the message of every election since Obamacare passed. Republicans have gained. Mm -hmm. uh, we gained the House, we gained the Senate, we gained the presidency. Uh, nobody ran on keeping Obamacare, right? right? Uh, and that's fundamentally what this bill does. It's really just an amendment to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, despite the claims that it's some draconian measure, it actually spends more. It doesn't spend less. It, it spends less than what President Obama's path would spend, or in Ohio, President or Governor Kasich had said we were going to spend. But frankly, if you go back in time and only spent what they said it was going to cost, whether you're talking about Obama or in Ohio where we took Medicaid expansion, mm -hmm. um, if we only spent what Governor Kasich said it was going to cost, that would be a massive cut to what the House bill says we're going to spend. So um, it, it, the reality is, even if it were working really well, it's not sustainable. It's not an affordable path that we're on. And frankly, it doesn't solve the right problem. The right problem is how much it costs. Mm -hmm. So families are getting crushed because the cost of health care is so high. And if you go back to the 60s, health care was only about 6% of the economy. Today, it's nearly 20%. And if we don't address the right problem, you know, it's going to grow to 20, 25%. It doesn't matter who picks up the tab, whether it's the government, the, I mean, the government Corporations and individuals pay taxes to fund for that. It's not free. It's not magic money. Right. Somebody still pays for that. Individuals pay it or corporations pay it. And it's, it's akin to going to the restaurant for lunch. Uh, you pick the restaurant. You already ordered lunch. Everyone throws their credit card in a hat, and you're fighting over who's going to pick up the tab. That's the downside of this bill. It's all focused on who picks up the tab, and it's not focused on the cost drivers. And so that's why, A, we do need to pass the bill in the Senate and do what we told the voters that we were going to do, and B, uh, we need to relentlessly pursue uh, reforms that actually solve the problem because this one bill isn't going to get it done. As a junior member of Congress, are, do you have any clout when it comes to the table or do you get smashed or pushed to the side by senior members? Yeah, that's a great question and it was one that I was curious about when I first got there. Mm -hmm. So on health care, for example, I've literally been at the table multiple times with the speaker. I, I know that one of the Early reforms, the speaker gave me a shout out at one of the conferences, and many of you, including Davidson, you know, had concerns about, frankly, a different version of a Cadillac tax that was targeting employer-sponsored plans, mm -hmm. and it would have ratcheted that down and basically driven out the way that most Americans get their insurance, their health insurance, is through work. Right. Um, this would have targeted it and started taxing it to really push more people into the individual market. But that's the part that works the best. It doesn't work perfectly, but it works better than the part where you're in the individual market. And then um, I, I was at the table with the vice president. I was at the table with the president. I got phone calls from the president, the secretary. But you're, at, you're at the table and you're getting these calls and you're rubbing uh, yeah. these elbows. But if you come up with an idea, because you, you kind of mentioned the status quo in, in previous articles, that there is kind of this, this image or perception whenever you first got there that things just kind of 
stay the way they are. How can you make any change as a junior member? Well, so one, you're not going to be able to change the whole structure right. of, of, of the house. There's 16 committees. Everything's broken up. It's not like one committee owns health care. As big as an, an important part of the economy as health care is, that would make sense. We would structure it. We would have a health care committee. Uh, but that's not how it's organized in Congress. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I'm not going to be able to change that. But here's one. So one that I was really passionate about when I got there is health insurance companies are exempt from antitrust laws. So these are the things that prevent companies from colluding to close the market or fixing prices, raising prices together. Uh, allegedly and purportedly just to set actuarial tables. But a lot of people feel that they use that to signal on prices and to block other competitors out of the market. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to address that when I got there. The encouraging thing is on that issue and number, a number of others, when I got there I found all these other people are really working on it too. So in this case, Paul Gosar and Austin Scott, guy from Arizona, guy from Georgia. Uh, Gosar since 2010. And he wanted to address this. Well, just this year we finally got to vote on that. And you think, oh, well, I haven't heard anything about that. Right. Uh, why not? Well, it's called the American Healthcare Competitiveness Act. It exempts antitrust laws. It's kind of you know in the weeds. Sure. More C Spanish, right? <laughs> uh, but it really is going to drive competition in the market, and it passed 416 to seven. Mm -hmm. So this is something everyone says, hey, it would make a difference. It's right. popular. And you think if this guy's been working on it since 2010, mm -hmm. why did it take so long to to be able to get done? Right. And unfortunately, the best answer is a little cynical, is because it would pass. And there's a lot of reforms like that where you have strong lobbies uh, that are pushing for the status quo. And that's mm -hmm. what's happening now. As people fear the status quo could change, right. uh, they're fighting tooth and nail to keep it the way that it is, All which right. is broken. You have your work uh, cut out for you, that's for sure. Thank you so much for joining us for this week in Cincinnati, Congressman. I know uh, you're busy on your break, uh, visiting other constituents as well, yeah. and uh, we'll let you get back to work. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for covering it. All right.